Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan, and a man who can't feel his face when he's with you, essentially, <laughs> Ku Su Chuang. Sorry, we got that song stuck in our head a yeah, little bit. Yeah, looping around and around in but, circles. But we'll talk about things that are looping and going up and down. We are looking at uh, the KLCI, actually up about 5.53 points to 1,661.53. Actually, regionally, I thought everything was green because everybody was shaken yesterday for the Paris attack, so people just decided to, to bunker down, but today uh, Wall Street actually had a positive handoff to everybody. Yeah, Goldman Sachs was the first one out of the block saying that the uh, fallout from the Paris attacks would be short-lived, and true enough, it has been relatively short-lived. Uh, but the truth is, Malaysia has been on a bit of a downtrend for the last two weeks, so we saw that bit of technical bounce though. I, I think essentially uh, people in general are just taking the opportunity to buy when they they want to come buy, because like I said, we've been having a few down days, so it's no surprise that today I think they just decided to be a bit more enthusiastic. Volume up at uh, 2.18 billion shares changed hands. All of that is 2.03 billion ringgit. Top gainers, as we saw them, was Inari Emerton, uh, Mai GX Yata. Top losers, Yong Tai, Tali Works, and Maybank. So the funny thing about this is that I wonder whether the enthusiasm will actually continue as we go into Friday. What do you think? Hard to tell because you've got the whole December rate rise to come, right? Uh, if and when it does happen. If and when. I, I personally think she's, bait and bait, she's doing what they call a bait and switch. She has, I, I don't think she's got much of a choice because she's really got to introduce it to the market. Otherwise, she'll lose her momentum in 2016. Well, we'll see. Like, I mean, she it, meaning, of course, the Federal Reserve Chairman, yeah, yeah, Janet Yellen. Yeah, our buddy, right? Our, your, buddy. our buddy, Janet Yellen. So the fact is, um, while well, in the meantime, everybody seems to be pottering on in his business, the one that doesn't seem to be pottering on his business is Japan. You weren't here yesterday, but I was talking to Charlotte about it, how there was this really funny cartoon of Abe, pre, what do you call it, Prime Minister Abe in Japan. He's... By doing it on a bicycle, and he's actually carrying behind him this whole load that says reform, out of recession, da 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 da, and it's a hard load for him to bear, but it didn't really work, did it? Well, there's nothing that says uh, failures of, success of monetary policy than five technical recessions in the last seven years, does it really? Yeah. Um, if you look at it, it's been an abject failure. The reforms that have been needed in the labor market have not really been forthcoming. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, he's fighting a bit of a losing battle in terms of the uh, labour market and where the ageing populations are. And I also think he's got a lot of political problems as well, that whole passing of that sabre-rattling uh, rule. But anyway, just looking at Nikkei, they were up actually 1.22% to 1,900, well, 19,630.63, if you want to be apt about it. Shanghai, uh, flat, really, really flat, 3,604.795. But after the summer they have, I suppose they're like, phew, it's not a plunge, you're just happy, it's flat. But moving on, actually, to our hot stock of the day, Dai Bochi. So up 11.25% to 5 ringgit and 24. Highest that it's been in the 52-week high. And what happened as we were going in? Huge day today. And uh, don't mention the word that starts with I, which is... Uh, Ink? <laughs> well, the thing Incidents. is, um, on the eve of them reporting a 35% surge in third quarter earnings, uh, Nadia, uh, to 6.8 million ringgit on the net profit front driven by higher export sales, the stock flew uh, yeah. by 11 and a quarter percent, as you say, to a new 52-week uh, high. As exactly. So the fact is, uh, earlier in the day when we were looking at the edge markets, they did say something along those lines. They said that... Uh, uh, Daibochi has actually been lagging compared to Tommy Pack. Tommy Pack's written something ludicrous like 122% here to date. Uh, Daibochi has only done like 22% of it. So the guy was saying that essentially it's their time in the sun. But these wonderful um, results make you wonder. I mean, not taking away anything from the company. We're just sort of like saying, wow, it's a great coincidence that somebody is very much in love with this company and believes in it. It's faith. So by way of background, what these guys do, they're basically plastic packaging uh, makers and they've got diversified in earnings from their property development front. Um, they are serving an export market. They used to do about 40% overseas sales in the latest quarter as released by the company. They now do 56% and a lot of them, uh, of their clients are basically multinational corporations like, N N N like Nestle, uh, like Milo. Uh, like, um, of course, the, the F&B players, right? Yeah, exactly. So the, when we were looking at this, uh, actually, it's interesting to see that how much they supply to the stuff that we didn't really realise, like Milo packaging, actually, in Southeast hard, Asia. Hard boxes, uh, flexible boxes, things like that. Yeah, exactly, for Cadbury <coughs> and uh, another lot of craft biscuits packaging as well. So yeah, these really, really good numbers. Uh, the problem is whether or not it'll go beyond the export love. You know, I, I think that when you see things like this, yes, it's nice, it's nice situational, but actually, as you will see when we talk about IOI COP later, how the reverse in the Forex will actually hurt you. But that's a little teaser. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute or so. Yeah, in terms of the valuation, it's not cheap anymore. It's 24 times earnings currently. Uh, ROE is about 13.9%. It's not bad, but dividend yields are just under 3%. So 
yeah, tough to kind of to go. Anyway, so why does it matter? It, in fact, apparently gained on rotational play, but of course what happened was the third quarter went up. You can see the earnings table, fantastic, almost 30% jump in the net profit. However, it's all exchange rate. We want to see whether or not they've actually done other kind of improvements before they go forward. But uh, dividend payout ratio does not seem attractive. Moving on to our stocks with Momentum. There's a whole bunch of them actually today. I chose Jag, not because I used to love the TV show, do you or remember the, the British sports car? No, <laughs> or that, or that British, I love the British sports car though. Flat at 12 and a half cent, negative momentum they're pegged at. These guys, what did these guys do? Well, they're basically waste management processing, right? Uh, and they also have an, another revenue stream in the form of human resource software. Uh, but they've basically fallen into, into losses this year after three straight years of profit. Uh, they booked an after-tax Q3 loss recently, Nadia, of 8.23 million ringgits. Uh, from a profit of 1.72 million ringgit a year ago. Now, of course, this is basically due, I think, in part to the staff cost. They had a, um, they had a kind of like a, a share issuance scheme. Yeah. So without that SIS, what they call the SIS scheme, they would have recorded a small PAT of about 851,000 ringgits in Q3. But be that as it may, they did book that loss because that scheme went through. They didn't. The, but the thing is, right? Even that, the, I mean, that that gain is tiny. Let's let's be very frank about it. The reason why I was reading reports about them was they were saying that the copper prices. We well, you know that all commodities have taken a slight hit. They said copper prices will, did actually hurt them. That was one main thing because I think they clean up a lot of those, you know, copper pieces and everything like that. So that's what actually was pushing them as well. But they're actively wanting to expand its waste management into processing now. I, I like this kind of business. Don't you like this kind of business where actually it's something that you will need going forward well, unless I mean, Elon Musk comes up with something? I mean, the, the fact is, the fact is they've got a lot of different businesses in a lot of different fields and you need a lot of different skill sets. I mean, well, between software and uh, waste management, they're two kind of like different companies uh, and different businesses. And the fact is they're also now diversifying into uh, 24 hour laundry laundromats, right? They've done a deal with, with uh, Bubble Lab. Um, they've got three outlets out there. They're going to launch another ten more by the next in, within the next six months. So, so this is for me they're interesting. Going to, they're going to operate in coin washing machines. They're going to have software, HR software. They're also going to be doing waste management. So I mean, how many different CEOs do you need? <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh, well, we can ask a couple of companies that. But do you? When's the last time you actually went to a uh, coin operated laundromat? Actually, they're not bad. I've used them all over the place. They're pretty good and they're quite cheap as well. Yeah. So I. I but people here still buy their own washing machines. They do, but if you're traveling. Oh, I suppose it's a good point. Or you have the hotel there. But anyway, just yes. to wrap it all, as much as we can talk about uh, coin laundries, the fact is uh, it was pegged as negative momentum by the Edge Research. They are a waste management business, but of course they've diversified into other things. But of course for us, that raises the question, how many CEOs do you need? You're doing, what is it, coin-operated laundries? You're doing software management? You're doing waste management. Which one is your key?